The King of Kings was released in 1927. It is a Cecil B. DeMille film. This is actually part of his biblical trilogy. The first one being the Ten Commandments. This is the second one. The third one being Sign of the Cross. Now this film follows uh, Jesus Christ the last weeks before his crucifixion. This also has uh, Technicolor to it, which I was actually kind of disappointed because there were only two scenes that had tech. I mean, this is the last weeks of uh, Jesus Christ. I mean, like you consider Ben Hur and how many times we saw Technicolor. And, and this was two years after Ben-Hur. So you would think that Cecil B. DeMille would use more Technicolor for, uh, I don't know. I don't know why he didn't use more, but um, considering that in Ben-Hur, we didn't actually see Jesus Christ. It was just, um, the idea of Jesus Christ being there, but it was the same type of story. If you understand, it was following Ben Hur. But anyway, I think you get what I'm saying. Just there were only two scenes, <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure you understand. I, I'm pretty sure we all know the story of. I'm not going to go into full detail. I mean, it's it has mary mag it actually starts with a scene of uh, mary magdalene and she's upset because judas isn't there so she goes to find and she meets uh, a carpenter she's upset because of this carpenter oh this carpenter and then they switch to a scene and it has all these people who are um excited over the fact that this person is uh performing miracles and everything well i'm sure we know who that is and, <laughs> and but there's this one little girl she's blind and she's going all over the place trying to find jesus christ and well she finally finds the home and everything this is where i kind of wish that they had used technicolor it is not in technicolor i kind of wish that they had uh, used Technicolor and they didn't. But anyway, then of course we then see Mary Magdalene and she meets Jesus and he uh, he casts out like the seven sins. I mean, it's like this big changing of, you know, and all that. And so, and, and again, it, it, they could have used the Technicolor for that. I mean, it was like he was performing miracles and they didn't use the Technicolor. So I, <laughs> yeah. Considering two years later, they were using Technicolor for uh, significant scenes. So I don't know. Um, but, I mean, it just, that was a, a big problem for me. <laughs> the, the sets are, in fact, I read somewhere that there's a, a gate the giant gate built for this film is used in other films, like for King Kong and in Gone with the Wind, the iconic, you know, the burning of Atlanta. And, um, and sets and costumes were reused in, like, a lot later in 1965 for his, for Elvis's film, Harem Scarum. And so if you're very familiar with the Elvis movies, and especially that one, You've probably seen some of these <laughs> sets and costumes. So I don't know if they're still around. I would like to think that they are. I didn't see that they had been uh, destroyed, much like in um, The Phantom of the Opera, where they had that set forever. And then in 2014, they got rid of it. It still breaks my heart. I, I don't understand. <laughs> it, it hurts. It hurts me dearly. Um, there was critical reception. Now, the one thing that I will give Cecil B. DeMille credit for, because if you remember in Ten Commandments, in the silent version, of course, there was like a modern side to it. 
it, it, it just threw me. Well, it threw a lot of people, even back it, back then. It was like, why did you do that? Well, he didn't do that in this one. <laughs> so, thank goodness. <laughs> um, uh, it received rave, rev rave reviews. Uh, there can be said nothing but praise and appreciation. It has a beautiful story and everything. Um, I did have a little bit of a problem at first with uh, Mary Magdalene. Seems like it was way over the top with the acting, but then I realized that that was the point. Because <laughs> after she met Jesus Christ and and all of that, you realize that it it that's the point of her character. And because um, I was like, oh, I really can't stand that. Well. And, uh, and you'll see when, when you watch <laughs> and everything. And so, but there were others who said that it was just kind of, it's a masterpiece, but, and, and, and it's visually pleasing and everything, but that's about it. <laughs> And I'm not sure where they were going with that, because if it's a masterpiece, that means you like it. So I, I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I think they liked it, but still wanted to be <laughs> a jerk about it. So I don't know. <laughs> now, there was a lawsuit uh, tied in with this. Uh, the next year, in 1928, there was a, an actor by the name of Valeska Surratt, and uh, he, he uh, or it looks, anyway, this, this particular individual stated that Cecil B. DeMille stole the scenario for the King of Kings, and there was also someone else, that, I'm not going to try and say this other person, it was a scholar, Said that Cecil B. DeMille stole the scenario of King of Kings. Well, <laughs> I was reading this and I'm just like, this is from the Bible. <laughs> Look, I, I, I grew up in a church and <laughs> there's no way. Even the title of it. I mean, when you grow up in a church and, and you have to understand that people were very church oriented even back then. And so, when you're in a church, you hear King of Kings, Lord of Lords, all of that sort of stuff. So for him to use that, it, it it's not like anything original. <laughs> it, it, uh, the case went to trial in 1930, uh, eventually was settled without additional publicity. Um, Surratt, who had left films to return to Sage in 1917, appeared to be unofficially blacklisted after the suit. Well, yeah. I mean... <laughs> this is such... I mean, you don't have to even go to church to know this particular... You know, to know this. You know what happens. <laughs> and it seems like there were two other uh, movies made even before this. And I'm sure that they're gone now. Well, all Valeska's uh, stories are gone. And um, all, all the movies are gone. They were gone in a fire. And um, Valeska is an actress. And uh, so, but <laughs> it, it didn't make any sense to me when I was reading about the lawsuit. I'm, I'm just like, really? <laughs> You're really going to do that. Now, there is a 1961 film called The King of Kings, and it's directed by Nicholas Ray. It is not a remake of Cecil B. DeMille's film, of, of this film. Um, it goes in a different direction. I think it follows the entire lifespan of, yeah, uh, let me see really quick here. It is a dramatization of the story of Jesus of Nazareth from his Nazareth from his birth and ministry to his crucifixion and resurrection. And that's again, uh, Cecil B. DeMille's does the last few weeks. 
So again, it is not a remake. And um, but anyway, so as a whole, <laughs> personally, I I liked the movie. I just wish that there had been more color to it. Because again, uh, two years earlier, Ben Hur had been made, and it's basically the same events, just following Ben Hur. So you would think that, especially like when he's uh, performing the miracles and everything, they would have uh, used that, and they didn't. Because again, with a lot of these films, they were using the Technicolor to signify something. You know, you saw it in Phantom of the Opera with Masquerade, and um, but it was just two scenes. So I was disappointed in that. Uh, it did get a critical reception. Some people said it was absolutely wonderful, and and it was a great depiction of these events. And and, and others were like, "Yeah, it's great, but and visually pleasing." But that's about it. I think they liked it and just didn't want to admit it. <laughs> and and, um, and when it comes to uh, Mary Magdalene, I thought she was overacting, and then you realize that that's the point. And uh, but. I and and the sets have been used in other movies. The costumes have been used in other movies. Um, I have not seen that particular Elvis movie, but I have seen Gone with the Wind. As soon as I saw that gate, I was like, I know that gate. <laughs> so anyway, this is King of Kings. It is the second in a Bible trilogy by Cecil B. DeMille.